all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information as the hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drops you will be the first we'll collect them all right let's go down to the news proper Lawmakers visit Namdekano resolve lawyers' restriction. <laughs> that is the thread now. That's what is currently going on. Lawmakers visited Namdekano uh, and they have resolved uh, lawyers' restriction. Of course, you know that uh, Mazi Namdekano's lawyers were restricted from seeing him. And um, there is something that was trending last week. Uh, some people are asking questions whether Nandekano or Nozikwa is he still in this earth or has he, how has he crossed uh, into the world beyond? And people were wondering that his face have not been seen this, that, that, that. <laughs> A lot of fear. And I, I think um, this is the part of what made a uh, uh, lawmaker to visit him is either to show uh, that he is still in the land of the living because uh, we are not even it's not even uh, a thing of rejoicing again uh, if they say lawmaker visited in and they can make so that we'll come and be rejoicing we know that is either election is coming closer and these people know that Kano is a gateway it happened in Anambra yes there was a big tension in Anambra during uh, Chukumachao Soludo's election, the election that brought Chukumachao Soludo in Anambra into office, Mazin and Kano contributed 90% of what brought Soludo into office, even though he was in the DSS detention. Yes, he contributed 90% of what made Soludo to become the governor of Anambra State. Soludo was visiting him, making a lot of promises, you know, talking about Nandekano and how people, uh, the government have left him, the government have not been able, he, he spoke uh, as if that if he gets into that office, that with immediate effect, Kano is out of the DSS detention. That was what people talk. And um, they played their politics, did their politics, used Kano as, as the picture maker. They used him as the, the front page, the man on the front page, because that's what they used. They used Kano as the man on the front page to be able to achieve the agenda. And that is what these politicians have been doing. That's what the politicians have been doing. Uh, even late, uh, when late uh, Iwanyan was alive, who was the former uh, 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 president of Ahanes and Dibo, there were a lot of politics. That's why I will tell Ndibo, can Ndibo Jilunwayo? Hmm? Make you not take it easy. Help your brother. You don't need to sabo your brother, betray your brother because of, of just politics. Because of politics. And because of this kind of politics that Ndibo are playing, Ndibo are not together, uh, they don't have a plan, they don't have a masterpiece. In, in, in the southeastern politics, there is no masterpiece. The South Eastern politicians are serving the Northern and the Western politicians. They are just like servants there. Ndibo have not been able to develop a, blue, a blueprint for themselves, a masterpiece of which this was why Ojuku came up with the Apuga Party in Carbon Kanye. And still on that, uh, this Apuga Party started dominating, dominating the East. There were a lot of governors in the South East that entered into office with Apuga, and immediately Apuga gave them office, they left Apuga, they entered another party. You forgot the small party, the little party that brought you into power. The little party that brought you into power, which, of course, you are now a stakeholder there, you are now a good man. The party brought you into power so that you can have power, so you'll be able to protect them. And what these people do is that when the party brings them into power, you see them dumping the party to jump to another party. You've forgotten how you got your victory. That this party, this little party you are dumping now, was the party that made you who you are. You were not a governor. And through the umbrella of this party, the flag bearer of this party, 
you went to uh, you went for governorship, you won. Now, yourself did not tell you that what you are there to do is to build your party, to make sure that your party becomes strong because they have made you a strong man there. You are aiming for the higher position, but that will be for the interest of your party. And that is what Ndibo has forgotten. Ndibo left this kind of politics of having a blueprint of what a particular people want, where they are going, their motion, their, their destination. The Southeast politicians have made us to know that um, Ndibo does not have a destination in Nigerian politics. Go, go and see how Asa people play their politics. You will understand that they have a destination. If you see how the Yorubans are playing their politics, you, know, you see that they have a destination. They have where they are going. The Yoruba man has entered now. Other states are being created in the, in the, in the southwest, in the Yoruba land. They are creating their own states there, in the west. New states are being added. How many has, has they added to Ndibo? Ndibo are not looking at some of all these things. What they are looking at is, let's go there, let's pack the money, let's share the money. They don't want to think about their people. Lagos State, the, the people in Lagos State are developing their state every day. Then uh, our governor says uh, they want investors. They want to bring investors into Alibo. How will an investor come into Alibo where they don't, have, don't even have a good uh, road access? No good road access in Alibo. You, you cannot, there is nowhere in Alibo you can see one big lane, a big lane, maybe like four or five lanes. It's only two lanes or one lane. If they build that one lane, they will be making noise that they have done something for Ndibo. Meanwhile, in Lagos State, they are building railways. These people are building trains, making business easy. They see the population that is coming in to do business. And recently, what Ndibo has also diverted to, which is what is happening now, turning their state a den of insecurity because a river does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. A river does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. And Nibo has changed their politics to politics of terrorism, politics of terrorists, where you see that in your own land, you will not be able to even harvest again. You will not be able to go to your farm land and farm and come in peace. Nibo have they have a vast land. On this vast land you have, big land, why don't you create roads, enough road inside all those places, inside those forests? Create enough road there, put railway, open the city. Well, because you want investors to come in, expand. But our governors have refused. Go to Anambra State and you see what, no, what is happening there. You go to other states, go to Abia State. It's even the one that Oti came in and is doing. And what even Oti is doing is not enough. Because the government have enough money. The people have refused to invest in industry and a lot of things. And meanwhile, uh, uh, a lot of people are going about. This lawmaker has also gone about uh, to meet Mazen and the Kano because it's either he has one interest or the other. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full detail of the information of what this lawmaker, uh, what transpired between the lawmaker and Mazen and the Kano in the DSS detention and how he visited Ahomadike Ndibo. Let's go down and with you. A lawmaker representing Ikwano Umwaha not Umwaha South Central Constituency Abia State, Obia Gota has visited the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nam the Kano. The visit, which took place on Thursday, October 24, 2024, is part of an ongoing effort to find a political solution to the continued detention of the IPOB leader. Kano, who was arrested on June 27, 2021, in the Kenya and subsequently extradited to Nigeria, is facing charges of terrorism, treasonable felony, and inciting violence through his radio Biafra, among others. This is what uh, they wrote about him. This is what they felt, the reason why they, they uh, imprisoned uh, Kano. Let's go on. A statement issued on Saturday by the media team of the lawmaker noted that Agocha was recently approached by Kano's legal team complaining of its inability to interface with the detained IPOB leader. The statement read, in part, a few days ago, the lawyer, Tomas Nandikan, reached out to his Honorable Minister, Obi Agocha, representing Ikwano Umwaya North and Umwaya South Federal Constituency. This was about the long-running difficulties being encountered by the legal team in their effort to gain access 
to meet with their client. Honorable Obi Agota took urgent steps in writing the Department of State Security and Adjin Abbas, Honorable Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives, seeking their immediate intervention. A meeting of the aforementioned was positive to the effect that Honorable Obi Agocha, having inquired from the DSS, who informed that the seeming pursue, the seeming pause to assessing Mazi Nambekano was occasioned by his lawyers, asking the judge to rescue him herself, which requires further legal processes and is also known to both parties. <laughs> Obi Agota had a physical audience with Nam the Kano on Thursday, 24th of October 2024, in the company of an immediate family member, MS Isioma Stella Ikbo, Honorable Obi Agota fully briefed Mazin and the Kano about the circumstances during their meeting. The statement further noted that the legal team have now been granted access to Kano. A resolution was reached regarding the lack of access to Nam the Kano by his legal team. All right, all right, all right, all right. All those English, all those grammar uh, is that Kano's uh, uh, legal team has been restricted from seeing him in the DSS custody. <laughs> you can imagine the, the country where we find ourselves, uh, your, your legal team, your legal advisor, your lawyer, a man who is standing for you, will be restricted access from seeing you. And um, tell me how you are going to win the case. <laughs> um... I think um, if every country, in a country that wants to heal, that wants to become better, first of all, the rule of law, the rule of law uh, must rule first. But um, uh, the rule of law must come first. And where there is rule of law, <laughs> that is where, uh, even it's not even about being a Christian. It's not even about being a Muslim. It's about the people coming together to say, I eh, want to make ourselves to work. <laughs> because uh, what happens in this country is that one person will come out and carry like 50 trillion alone, and you have looted other people. You loot the money that uh, other people are supposed to use to survive. And when this money is being looted, another person will come into power and see that money has been looted. He will hunt the other person that looted the money, collect the money from the person, uh, the much he can collect, and that is his settlement. He allows the person to go, and he himself will take that recovery for himself and still loot another one. <laughs> that's the government we find ourselves, uh, that's the government that is running the country, and that is why fuel is uh, 125 naira and uh, if they are telling us that they will bring it down to 1000 we are clapping for them we are happy <laughs> uh, meanwhile uh, uh, very soon uh, we are we are heading to 2025 and 2025 budget will be read out to us and we'll see the budget of 2025 we'll see uh, all the works they have done with it <laughs> Uh, because they promised us good road. Uh, meanwhile, there is no good. Since uh, they gave birth to me in Nigeria, every day the government comes and tells us, ah, we need good road. That what they, will, they will tell us what they are bringing to us. Uh, good road. This one. This one. This one. This one. They tell us all these things. And at the end of everything, we see nothing. <laughs> and since that time, the promise of each government that is coming in is giving us good road, electricity, and pipe bomb water. You could imagine in 2023, in this century, uh, that they are still promising Nigeria pipe bomb water. They are still promising Nigerians uh, good road. They are still promising Nigerians electricity. And even the power grade have fallen like three times this year. A power grade, a whole national power grade has fallen three times. And this will, <laughs> this will help you to see the, the, the management, how the management are doing their work. But the power grade has, has fallen four times. Power grade. Meanwhile, uh, this is where we'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share. And also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, Go be the first work later. Thank you for listening. God bless you.